Hey there, this is Neil Napier here. Just give me a very quick shout out if you can hear me all right. And if you can see the screen as well, the screen should be the Kai Viewer dashboard. And today is a double session. I'll tell you more about that in a second. Perfect. Everyone can hear me well. Uh, Giselle, Colin, Wolfgang, good to have you on the call. We have a few people coming in, which is nice. Marie Joel, good to have you here as well. Perfect. Yes, I apologize for missing the session last week. I was here attending a wedding in India and then I got sick and I've been in bed for a good few days, but I'm back. I'm feeling better. And uh, today, as I mentioned, will be a double session. I'll chop it up later into two separate parts. But last week, the session that we were supposed to cover, uh, what we were supposed to discuss was I was going to show you funnels created with Guyvio. So one of the things that has been often requested in the Facebook group is, can you show me funnels that have been built using Kaivio? Or can you show me pages that have been built using Kaivio? Number one, I will show you that. Because by now, I have shown you all different aspects of the smart funnels. And I want to show you some samples, some examples of what people are building out there. That's the first part of the session. The second part of the session, which is, what today's session was supposed to be all about was the membership walkthrough. Now, I know that Alvin and Riste did that lot last week, but I wanted to do it myself because I wanted to make sure that you see the things the way I have them in place. Now, do be mindful that when we release the smart products module, a lot of things will change for the smart membership. When that happens, I'll be doing another couple of webinars perhaps to walk you through everything so don't worry what I'm going to show you today applies for now and even when the smart products module comes in there might be some changes in layouts and everything for smart membership but most other things will work exactly the same there'll be a few new templates as well when that happens but for most part the functionality will not change so we'll walk through that today as well Altogether, the session might be between, I suspect, 90 minutes to 120 minutes. So if you need to go somewhere later on, it's okay. There will be a replay, and I'll link it to you perhaps tomorrow. Now, with that being said, let's get started with the first part of today's session. And this time, what I want to talk about is funnels built inside of Kaiview. As always, if you have any questions, do ask. But I'm going to do a walkthrough to begin with, and then I'll take some questions. So, so far I have shown you smart funnels. I've shown you how to build your own funnel from scratch. And actually between then and now, there's already been a little bit of change when you are starting to build a new funnel because we are, custom we are systemizing things quite a bit. And so there have been a few changes. There's this box missing here that shouldn't be missing. But anyway, as you pick one, you'll be offered an option to add more than one page. I won't go into this yet. This is a new UI change, and once it's finalized, we'll go back and redo some of the training sessions again. But don't worry if you don't follow along this right now. What I do want to focus on, though, is give you a few examples of different kinds of funnels that have been created within Kaivio for quite some time now. Now, I'll come back to physical product funnel at the end because I'm trying to think back to the example and I did record a YouTube video for this. Let me see if I can open that up. I recorded video of a funnel that someone had created online and uh, let me just switch accounts here. And they were quite successfully, oh, I don't have that account linked here. They were quite successfully selling products, physical products on that funnel, integrating with Shopify. Uh, I'll go back and check the link in the Facebook group in a little bit. But for now, let's look at the Kaivio homepage. And I'm going to show you behind the scenes how that one was actually built. So in this case, if I go down, I think it's on here. Let me just check it out. Okay, it's not one of these. I think it's been moved around. Let's go back here. Okay, Kaivio new homepage, I just missed it. So we started working on the homepage some time ago. Initially, what happened was that I created a draft of what I wanted, but then the designer stepped in and they basically made it 
so much better than it was. And I want to show you this page right now. So, oh, again, it goes to roadmap. Let's go back to this and let's go to the home page. Yep, there we go. So you can see we've already gotten quite a lot of traffic to this page. And this is typically the kind of page you would expect a software as a service to have. So there's a menu on the top and then there's a login button and then there's a button that will take people to the trial page if they want. The button, this button and this button go to the same place. But this is more of a direct call to action to get people to commit to buying basically i mean we've actually tracked this and relatively we get more conversion from this button than from this button over here and that's simply because the call to action here is much stronger so the reason i'm telling you this is because when you're building a funnel make sure that even the top menu has a button with a strong call to action because if you have that people will organically gravitate towards that because it tells them to do something. So they're more likely to do it when they click here than rather, you know, I have to improve the way I'm talking about this. People are more likely in action when they click on the start $1 trial button than they are when they click on this pricing button over here. So in that sense, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, make it a bit bigger. Okay, in that sense, always have your top menu arranged in such a way that it's number one, easy to follow, and number two, it gives people an option to take an action when they interact with that page. Then, the element that we have over here is a strong headline. Now, this is typically a tagline for a product. On your home page, people need to remember you with something. For Kaivio, that's keep creating, keep selling. So our message to our prospects is simple. Just keep creating stuff, keep selling stuff. We take care of the rest. We take care of all the infrastructure behind the scenes. So there's a little bit more information, a little bit of blurb and an image. I could replace this image with a video, but an image is just as fine. The reason I don't do a video is because I think Typically, when I find videos for websites, you know, one minute, two minute video doesn't give me enough. It's better for me to go to YouTube and watch a lot of videos about the platform itself. So I just, we just put screenshot here to show what this looks like from the inside. Then again, another call to action, start your $1 trial. Then as we go down, you'll see that we start going through different sections, different blocks. And I want to show you this in here as well. Let me just go in here. Let's edit this. So I'll show this to you in edit mode as well. So in edit mode, we have the menu on top. Then there's this block with this image. And let's go further down. OK, there's a new block where we are now telling people a little bit more about what they can potentially get. That's what this block does. Then we have a video. Now. We could have just not used a video at all in this page, but we spent quite a lot of time creating this video. So we thought, why not? So we put this video in place where people can watch. And within a minute, they get a little bit of understanding of what Skyview is. Of course, a minute is not enough, but for us, it's enough to give this information to our customers, prospects. Then we have some testimonials and then a full list of testimonials as well. One change I could do here is make it blue because blue is obviously automatically something you click at the moment it's the same font same color as this text over here then we've got some more text some more bullet points basically some more screen shot and imagery that people can associate with and another call to action so call to actions are important let me show you how often have i actually used them that's once and that's twice and three. So three times I have put the same call to action, start your $1 trial, start your $1 trial, start your $1 trial. So this is a message that people pick up on every time they land on this page is that it's really easy to get started with a trial. So what's happened for us there is that it's become easy for us to get more signups. If I had used a different call to action, something like get started now or get your membership now, this would be rather vague, but just telling them that it only takes a dollar, it only takes $1 to start is an easy call to action.
Now, what you will notice in all of these pages that we have is this common footer. And I want to show you this by going to here. So if we go to features, you'll see we have the same menu up on top. And if I go down, we have the same footer here as well. Now, there are some pros and cons to this, and I want to explain that to you. Because we have the same menu on top, if something changes on one page in the top menu, it has to change on all the menus. Because right now we don't have the functionality which would allow you to just have one element across multiple pages. One day we're going to make that happen. And that way you can repeat blocks, menus, footers across multiple pages in your site. At the moment we don't have that functionality. But by doing this, we are able to keep everything consistent. See, all the items up on the menu here are the same as all the items up here. Let's go further up there. Same with the footer. We have the same menu items for the footer as well. There we go. We've used the same color scheme everywhere, same background wherever possible to keep things consistent. The only reason you notice a slight change here is because this is not 110%. There we go. Now, as I jump from one to the other, it should exactly be the same. It's actually not because it does say Insta Suite. It's still the old name, so I got to get that fixed. But this is a challenge that we face when we use these kind of footers as well, which are separate on separate pages. So that's a problem too. But as you will see, this footer is right over here. And if I want to reuse this page, by the way, so the way we did this was that we first created one page where all the top menus were as expected. All the bottom footer menus were as expected. Once we were done with that, we simply saved it as a template. Because when you do that, you can reuse it again within the same site. So in that case, when you're building a new page, it's quite easy to just go ahead and say, OK, add a page and pick it up from a template. So if I just, uh, let's see if one of them needs to be picked up. OK, if I wanted to, I could click here and I could just select template. And one of the templates is the one that I have saved before. All right, so they're all the templates that I currently have access to. And one of them is the Kaivio homepage template that we have worked on. Which I can search from right here and I can maybe find it. Let's see if it brings up something. Yeah, there, InstaSuite, because originally started as InstaSuite, but it's InstaSuite slash Kaivio original homepage, actually. So I don't want that, but let me search for the one here right now. Maybe I can get it. Okay. I don't know where the team saved it, but it is saved in the system and it can be reused. If not, like I said, you can just save it yourself again and you can reuse it for other pages as well. So the homepage was built in a very simple way. We wanted to make sure that we follow a similar color scheme. And once we built it, we duplicated it across other pages as well. So if I go into, let's say, Tour, which is the Features page, as I showed you, same colors, everything looks more or less the same. If I go down here, I could go to Testimonials. And again, you can see the page looks more or less the same. Right? So these are all the testimonials that our users have given us. If I go to roadmap, I can see roadmap as well, and I can see what basically our plans are with this platform. So all these things are available to allow you to understand what the page is supposed to do. And you can build one of these for yourself quite easily just by building one home page first and then duplicating it over and over if you have a big complex site. We use the same concept when we built out another website called Team Rack. Let me log out and I can show you that as well. That one isn't as pretty as the Kaivio one, but that's just because we didn't, our designers didn't spend too much time on that particular site. So there. You can see very similar one. We've got the menu up on top. We've got the free one-month trial. We've got headline, 
make a distributed team work, which is again a tagline, some additional text, image on the right, and basically a list of features. And this one has different call to actions though, right? You can see, whoop, sorry about that. I think the screen got lost. Okay, perfect. So in this case, you can see we have a different call to action than we do up on top, but that's an easy fix. And the page has otherwise been built the same way. These are similar pages that sit inside of Skyview, right? Some of them go outside. So if I click here, this one stays here. We actually had to build a special function for this. Oh, this one's cool. Actually, I want to show you this. So this is how the pages have been structured. Now, if I go back into Skyview, let me jump on over to we find this website, Team Rack. Okay, so within Team Rack, we've got a very cool page. I like this page because people can basically toggle between yearly and monthly. And you'll notice this, by the way, that the URL on top says pricing dash yearly. If I click on monthly, the URL now says pricing dash monthly. So people now see different prices if they wish to buy. So this way, I've been able to separate out the pricing into two pages, but show them only on one. So let's go in here. Okay, there we go. Let's check both of these. There we go. That's the pricing monthly and that's the pricing yearly. And that's the home page. So if I just go ahead and click here, I'll show you this. There. So this is one button. If clicked, it leads people to this particular URL. This is another button, uh, monthly. Okay. If clicked, this leads people to this particular page, pricing monthly. But of course, because they're on pricing yearly page already, we have turned this into white. And similarly on the pricing monthly page, this one will be gray and this one will be white. So that's quite simply how these pages have been configured. And all you need to do for your own business as well is as I mentioned, build one page and then duplicate it over and over again. You can also do split testing. So even for homepage, if you want to track how many trials are coming through, you can do split testing then you can make sure that you set up a slightly different kind of homepage, maybe with just one specific change that could make an impact. Maybe there's a text on the buy button. So these are a couple of, let's say, complex sites as I would call them made with Skyview. So these sites that you could typically create in WordPress, again, you will have to use WordPress by a theme, design it and everything, and then you would have to fill it up with content. But most importantly, you will have to make sure that WordPress is maintained and you have different plugins to do different things. But that's how you typically would create this in WordPress. Now you can create this in Skyview quite easily. Is that clear so far? Do you have any questions? Let me know. I'll grab a sip of water, but I'll stop and answer a few questions before I show you some other sites as well. Okay, excellent, excellent. And that says Skyview website is a great example. It is, I think, you know, we, we considered should we use WordPress, but we said, why? I mean, we've got a good platform here and it's the easiest one I know to edit a page. So we did that, we used Skyview. Then I wanna show you a few other pages. So this was the Skyview homepage, Team Rack. Then let's look at the old Skyview sales page. So let me log out again and log into different account. So as you know, Kaivio was previously known as Instasuite. And when we opened it up to public in April of last year, the page looked quite different. 
I mean, quite different. For starters, it had InstaSuite plastered all over it, you know, so the branding change happened at some point as well. But also the layout and everything else was quite different. And I want to show you this right now, but I want to see if I can find the page here. There are quite a few pages. So we basically, we were really bad in processes last year. And I mean, I want to point out that it wasn't just us, but it was also Susanna's team working on this. So we ended up putting in like 50 different pages inside this one funnel, which is ridiculous. You should never, ever do that. It's just too much, way too much. So we made that mistake. I would say don't put more than 10 pages in your funnel. It's not really necessary, right? So we had one of these pages. Let me see if I can open up this one. Yeah, this is, you know, later on we changed the logo to Kaiview, but this is what it used to look like. So we had, and again, we split tested this a lot you know, especially the headline and the video part. But typically for those kind of sales pages, they're quite long form. As you can see, this is really, really long. It's humongous. It has a ton of different things in it, all useful, mind you, but it's still too much to put on one page. It works for a launch kind of thing because you're not sending people to multiple pages, but it doesn't at all work when you are using it for evergreen pages. For that, you need something more complex, something more like this. But with this one, we had a really big headline. We split tested this. We had a video, a call to action, get instance, instant access. We talked about various different features, introduction, case study. I mean, everything that goes in typically a long form sales page. And remember, after this, we typically have an upgrade option as well because that's how the previous funnels used to work. So this is an upgrade option. If people buy what they would be offered in the beginning, then we offer them some more as an upsell. And again, this was a monthly price, still is a monthly price, but they get much more on that. And that's something that people can take or not take. And this is like a simple no thanks link. So this is a more, how should I say, funnel with different levels. So this is the key difference, right? Difference. So we had, again, I'll refer to this as InstaSuite. We had InstaSuite main offer, and then we had a pro offer, then we had like an agency offer on top of that. Whereas for this one, it's, you see all the options on one page. So you've got basic business pro option. You can pick whichever you want. Now, some people might not actually pick you know, if, if you give them three options here instead of one, they get confused and maybe they will leave. If you give them one option like we were doing here before, people will just buy because it's quite clear that it's one option. So we really considered it. Should we give people just one option or should we give multiple? But we noticed that almost everyone in the industry was doing three options. And they were priced in such a way where people would be more inclined to buy the option in the middle. So you can see that the way we put best value over here, the way we priced it, this option is much better than either of these two options. And that's what people go for. I mean, 60% of our customers go for this option, about 30, 35% go for this, and about 5% go for this option over here. Previously, we've had more when the price was lower, but since we started using this table, that's the breakdown that we have. So there are different ways of constructing your pricing page. I mean, as I mentioned, your funnel could be, for example, you have a front end, then an upgrade, then upgrade two. Or you can do what we have done and say three options on the same page. Let people pick one. That's it. There's Otherwise, there's no difference between how these three pages are done. I mean, I would argue, and I think this is fair, that if you only have a front end option, if you only have one option in the beginning, that's something that people can decide immediately whether or not they want to get in, right? And it could be low priced as well. It could be like 17 bucks. And then after that, the upgrade could be, I don't know, $997 if I'm being absurd, right? But what I prefer to do now for, uh, for a platform like this 
is just give the options up front. If people take me up on it, great. If they don't, that's fine as well. So that's the old Kyvia sales page, how that one was configured. Then we also have a webinar funnel. I want to show you this. And again, I think I might have to switch the account one more time, but that's okay. Let's log out from here. Okay, so this is a page that I had created for most part myself, which is why you'll notice that it's not as visually appealing as perhaps it could have been. I'll show you how I did that as well. But this is a webinar page. A page where people can sign up to attend a special workshop that we are doing to sell Kaivio. So if I go back here, let's see if I can quickly find it in the smart funnels. There. Okay, let's check this out. And recently, we haven't driven much traffic to it, which is why you don't see much here. So there you go. That's the sell first page. Let's go ahead and edit that. Okay. So for this, what we did was that we had a background image. So for this box over here, again, I think go to webinar is interfering. Okay. For this box over here, we had a background image, which I can open up here and show you, is this one. So it's Stephen and I at the back, right? So it was about Stephen and I essentially showing people how to sell first and then create later. How to make sales first and then after that actually create a course to, to deliver, to fulfill. So we did this training and you know the page was constructed in quite an easy way i would say we just kept on adding blocks till we had enough some blocks were transparent i like what i like is dark transparent dark transparent and so on and so forth i like the changes in color the contrast and of course red is quite effective as well at grabbing attention so this was a webinar page that we built when people would sign up. Let me show you what happened. So I can show you as well. If I click here, uh, you will see that we actually had a pop up that opened up. So it was like a very simple pop over that opened up. And let me show you this. That's the form. When people signed up. This page would open up. So this was a thank you page where we said that hey congratulations you're booked in for the event for the webinar and watch this video follow these three steps and uh, make sure that you do all of this over here so it was a lot of things could have been done a bit cleaner but for starters you can see from from black to red i wanted to change the color a little bit that was the first thing and secondly i wanted to make sure that people take follow certain steps so we asked people to add the webinar to their calendar then we also you know because you were running paid traffic we thought what if we wanted to make some money back immediately so we started giving people fifty dollars off for getting 21 day recurring machine then we also said hey if you didn't get your link in your email make sure you sign up here because you know sometimes apis can fail so i said hey sign up here one more time if in case you didn't get the link and then I also said join our Facebook group and that's something I always try and do I always try and bring people back to our Facebook group so we can make sure that there's some engagement there as well so this was a webinar thank you page so a simple webinar sign up page and then a webinar thank you page that essentially gets people to commit if my thank you page was too simple where I would just say hey okay you know here's the thing you need to download I'll see you on the webinar, bye bye. It wouldn't be enough. Instead, what I did was I simply convinced people to watch the video where I showed them the training that I had promised on the first page. And then I gave them links to get a product of mine as well if they wanted to, but also at the same time, make sure that they could join the webinar, 
the workshop than that we would that we would do in the future. So that's a webinar page and a webinar thank you page. It's a webinar funnel basically. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm just going to go and find the link for the video that I did and then I'll come back and I will answer those questions for you. All right, let's see if I can find the post. Perfect, found it. Okay, there we go. All right, can we use, uh, let me answer some questions now. Can we use WordPress plugin say for optimization of keywords? Uh, Les, if you've got a WordPress platform, by all means you can use the keywords there, but you can't, uh, the, the plugins there, but you can't use plugins on Kaivio. Okay, all right. So this is the video where I basically picked up this person's, um, let me find the page there um, where I picked up this person's page where they were giving away a scarf so they had let me see if I can actually find it right now in front of you by the way this is what I use to find pages quickly so just type site kaiview.com and then you can put a keyword and it'll bring all the pages related to that keyword that have been created within the platform. So this was the one I reviewed in quite a lot of detail. This was a simple opt-in page and uh, with a 10 minute countdown timer, when someone would opt in, they would be taken to another upsell page where they would have the option to buy a product for discount. And whether or not they chose yes on that, they'd be given an option to buy another product on discount or just you know go straight to checkout. So that's something that this person had created, had done really well for the physical product funnel. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to drop the link for you in the chat box as well. Make sure that you watch it later on, if not now. It's a really, really good video. I mean, I'm not saying that because I created it, but I think the way this person created um, this funnel i think it was pretty neat i think they had done an amazing job to make sure that this funnel would convert well and they had integrated with shopify which for me is a pretty awesome thing to do certainly is all right so watch this video as well but the key takeaway here being that you can create a lot of different kinds of funnels with guide or whatever you think you want to create, you can make that happen with Kaiview. It doesn't even need to be a funnel. As I showed you, Kaiview itself is a website. If you were looking at it, you couldn't tell if it was a WordPress website or something else. You'd probably think if it was a, it was a WordPress website, but it's not. It loads faster. It's more secure. You don't have to worry about updates and whatnot. And sure, it doesn't allow the use of plugins. But as I always say, if there's something you want to get done, either there's a way to do it, or if not, ask us. We can find a way for you. Or if we can develop a feature to make that happen, if it's important enough, we can do that as well. So these were some examples of, let's say, funnels that are mostly mine, but funnels that we've also found from other users. But now what I want to show you is a few pages that other people have built. And I think I came across them today when I was doing some research. Some of them I already had, but they look really, really good. You tell me. So right now I'm showing you uh, a page called Vigorous Muscle Max. Does that look good or not? Just by looking at this, this first image. Does that look pretty neat or not? What do you think? It's pretty nice. I like it too. I really like it. I mean, 
when I came across it, I was just like, wow, this is amazing that they built this on Kaiview. So as I keep going down, you can see that there are a lot of dark graphics and they've done a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a pretty good page. I'm sure they have other pages too. So again, what I can do is I can go to site, type this and see that they have some other pages as well, like about us and contact us. Then let me show you another one. There. So actually, this is something that I'm going to reverse engineer because honestly, I don't know how they did this. I have no idea how they have this menu on the left, this thing on the left, and then this thing on the right. So I'm going to figure that out and I will tell you about it because this is really, really awesome. This is really, really cool. See, I just, I really love this page. I really, really love this page. I think color wise, maybe not so good, but the way this page has been structured, again, I'm just amazed that it's inside of Kaiview. That's how good it is. Uh, that's the second page. Then we have another one. Let's go to this. Yeah. So it's a different kind of page. I mean, you know, they're definitely using all the graphic work they can, but then it goes a lot more into text later on. It's an opt-in page, but it's a very high intensity opt-in page. That is, it gets people to read a lot, to spend some time on the page before even showing them the option to opt in. There's a button, of course, or rather just some text. It looks like button. Perhaps they shouldn't be doing that. But that was one page that I came across as well. Then there's this one. So this is done in Spanish. I'm going to just pause this. So it's done in Spanish. It's an opt-in page. But you can see they have all the URLs here in the footer as well, all the privacy policy, DMC, and whatnot. So this was in Spanish. Uh, let me see if this person has some more pages underneath this. Okay, just this one. Then we had another one, another one for fitness actually. There we go. So this person's actually using, it's in German, they're using one of the images within the platform itself. But I think everything has still been neatly laid out. Very neatly laid out. I like this page as well. I do. I mean, sure, some things could still be better, but I think they've done a pretty good job. And they're setting at like 399 a month max. So I like this page. I think it's a it's a nice page as well. And there are a few more, you know, from there on that other people have done. Then I think this was the one that I liked. I want to show you this as well. So I believe they are actually selling Kaiview in French. Right? So if I go down, see they're selling Kaiview, they have got all the features listed and whatnot. But what I loved was this pop-up. I thought the pop-up was really good. It came out and there was enough text. If I could understand it, I, I would know what they're trying to sell. And then if I click here, I can go to the Facebook group. I don't know which Facebook group that is. But I suspect it's their own. I'm just going to check it out right now because I'm very curious where this goes. So it goes to a Facebook group in French. And actually, I recognize the people running it. They're in our group as well. But this is how this page looks like. Like I said, I quite liked it. 
Um, I think Giselle says uh, the page was too busy. Giselle, I agree. I think it's a different one that you're talking about, if I'm not mistaken. I agree. Some pages look too busy, but somehow they still can work. I mean, it's, it still amazes me how ugly pages can work, but I guess they get other things right. So they're not that much focused. Yep, it was a gorilla one. Yep. So they're not as much focused on the design aspect, but rather they're focused on giving out as much information as possible. And the thing I liked about them was how they had used two rows, basically. Okay, now I figured out how they used that. Two rows, and within that, they had a lot of different text and everything. So it was a very complex page the way they had built. I mean, I'm sure there are easier ways of doing that as well, but they had done it in a complex way. And I think, I still think it looks nice. I mean, functionality wise, not design wise. The fact that to me, Yes, it is busy, but they've been able to put a lot of information in a short space. That's quite an achievement. But like I said, everyone thinks differently, and that's perfectly fine. So those were some examples. Those were some samples that I wanted to show you to just inspire you, basically help you move forward, and make you realize that you can really create any kind of pages you want with Skyview. All you have to do is think about what you want, and what helps me? Okay, I'll tell you this. What really helps me when I want to design a page myself or with my team is some kind of architecture, some kind of, you know, sketch on a piece of paper. So I would just simply get a piece of paper, big piece of paper, a pen, and I would draw like a window frame on it. And within that frame, I would assume that's my website my web page and then I'll start putting stuff inside it okay this is where I want the call to action this is where the top menu will go this is what the video will, will look like this is what the headline will look like and then what different sections you want on the page and so on so when you are building out a funnel take it step by step work on it page by page and for every page if you want to just you know get started sketch it out in front of you on a piece of paper, and then slowly migrate it onto Kaiview. That is by far the easiest way to build your own funnels without frustration, without stress. Now, let me see if you have any questions. If you do, let me know, and soon we'll move on to the second part of this session. And remember, always remember, you if you want to find pages that are built with Kaiview, all you have to do is type this in there. If you don't put a keyword, it will literally bring all the pages made with Kaiview. And I suspect there are quite a few. So that can be a bit tough to find as well. You know, what you're looking for. See? Sometimes I just go to these pages and look at how they're structured because I think everyone's doing different things, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, I don't know if I should open this page. Yep, simple subscription page. Uh, that's quite noisy for me. I don't know. Well, that's another page over there. Yeah, so everyone does pages differently, but just go through this code that I've shown you and you'll find a lot of pages. Type in something more specific, like let's say your niche, and you'll find all the pages related to marketing. Okay. All right, let me know if you have questions. I'll grab a sip of water and I'll answer those and then we'll move on to part two. Um, is there an API integration to Amazon AWS? No, and we hadn't even considered one actually. Uh, Colin says to migrate images, no. No, we hadn't thought of that. I mean, if you want to bring an image from Amazon S3, at present you will just have to copy the code from there and put it in copy the URL that is and put it where you want the image to be. Okay.
Um, Colin, could I, uh, Nicholas, if you're around, could you please drop the feedback portal link for Colin? And if it could be put there, we can ask other users as well what they would like. Uh, I have a question there to last week and membership sites. Is the link that I sent out to people? Yes, Marilyn, that is indeed correct. Oh, I see you did answer this question in uh, Facebook group as well. Sorry, I haven't had the chance yet, but I'm going to show you this soon. But yes, that's the link that you send out to people. I, I will explain. Let me just explain. Okay. All right, cool. Colin, I'm just going to drop the link to you. Uh, you got it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, now let's move on to the second part. And in the second part, what we're going to do is we are going to look at the membership site builder of Kaivio. Now, this comes with a fair warning that it is going to change in the near future, but don't worry, that's not going to happen immediately. And when it does, I'm going to give you another walkthrough session to show you what has changed. And even then, the changes will not be dramatic. We won't be changing the entire user interface. Um, in fact, in fact, yeah, okay, I don't need to show you the new user interface just yet, uh, the new layouts and all. They're going to be quite similar. That's that's what I can tell you. So with that being said, let's look at the smart memberships and let me show you how to use this to your advantage, how to build out courses, how to hand out courses to people, how to add members, delete members, you know, stuff like that. So in my case, I already have a membership site set. So I don't need to go to settings, but if you go to settings, you can find a lot of important things about your membership. So let's start there. The very first thing is a basic membership site information. So what is the site title? For me, it's KV Social Membership Site. It is what you want it to be. Then what's the slug? Now, slug is the one that, Michael, you were asking, what do I pass on to people? You can set this to whatever you want. I set it to outsourcing because back then I was creating an outsourcing course, but you can set it to member, you can set it to hello, you can set it to go away, whatever you want, right? So if I just show you this, let me open in an incognito tab. This is where it takes people automatically, a login page, right? So people need to click here to basically log in to our particular, our specific membership area. Then on the membership itself, you can choose to show all active products or show purchase products only. The pros and cons to both. If you show all active products, people will also see the products they don't have. Now, it's a good thing because some of them might buy the products they don't have, but some customers get might get annoyed. They might send in a support ticket saying, hey, why don't I have access to this product? I paid for it. Turns out they didn't pay for it. They're just confused. So it really depends on you if you're okay to have a little bit more support for more money or if you prefer less support, less hassle. That one is entirely up to you. Then you can have some footer text in place as well. We don't. So the footer text, if I'm logged in or even if I'm here, shows up as simple copyright, KV social, and the year. Okay. If I go here, you can see that says member login, KV social, because that's our site name. Then you have some registration settings. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so you have registration settings here. Now, when you enable this, all three members must confirm their email address before they can log in. It's quite straightforward, but let's say what you don't want to happen is for someone to send a lot of um, bad traffic to this page, and it's like fake traffic, and people are just signing up but are not using it. So to really create an account, because remember, each person that gets added reduces your limit rather you know gets you closer to hit your limit so in this case if you enable them the free members must confirm the email address before they can log in if you want to create automatically password for someone 
you pick what the length should be. We say six is okay, but it's up to you. You can enable or disable this setting to enable to enforce strong password. Because when the setting is enabled, new member password must contain at least one lowercase and one uppercase character and one number. Most of this is for free signups. For paid signups, you automatically deliver them the login information, as I will show you soon. Then you can also choose to enable or disable manual registration. When this is enabled, new members who purchase via Marketplace or Affiliate Network must complete registration form before logging in. Personally, I don't use it. If someone has paid for a course, I want to give them logins ASAP. I don't want to hold back and say, hey, you know, sign up, sign up again, and you know, then you can get your logins. Because that will annoy people. If they've paid, for example, you know, even 10, 20 bucks, they don't want to waste time to create a new login. Just should just have already logins in the email. Then there's just some security settings. What happens when people log out? Where should they go? I send them to login page. You can also send them to custom URL, which could be a sales page where they could check out other products as well. And then we also connect with support desk if necessary. Quite simple, pretty straightforward, but let's click save and move on to step number two. Step number two is email settings. Now, if you're using the email marketing part of Kaivio, you'll notice that you can, or rather you have to use your own autoresponder, your own SMTP. You don't need to do that for memberships. For memberships, because these are classified as transactional emails, which means someone has paid or someone has opted in, we automatically send them an email to say congratulations, here's your account, please use it. You can set the from name, you can set the from address as well. We recommend instead, we insist not to use free emails like Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, and so on. Because they always get blocked. They always get blocked. Which is not something you want. You can have an email signature in place as well if you want. It's up to you. Then you also need to have business address. But this is where all the notification emails come in. And this is very, very important. We have five different forms of notification emails. We have the welcome email, confirmation, forgot password, purchase receipt, and cancel subscription if it's a recurring membership. So within the welcome email, as soon as someone creates an account, you can send them this email. You can customize this as much as you want. So welcome to, in this case, KV Social. Hi, your name, the member's name rather. Thank you for signing up as a member on KV Social. Here's your username, here's your password. Click here to access the membership site, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Right? You can use a different language if you want as well. If you speak Spanish, French, German, whatever, it doesn't matter you can use your own language in here as well. We automatically send out the unsubscribe links as well underneath this, so don't worry. If you think that they're missing, they're really not. They're still there. It's just that we automatically send it to them within this email. And there are two kinds of welcome emails. The first welcome email is someone for whom there is no account created on your membership site. The second email is if they already have the account, because in that case, of course, we don't want to reset their password. We just say, hey, go here, use this username, and use the password that you already have. So both the emails are different, even though they look similar. Then you've got the confirmation email. Let me show you that. So when they register an account, you can send them a conf confirmation email as well. That's up to you. I generally don't worry about it. You can send a forgot password email, which is really important. Just, you know, even if you change all this text, by the way, it's okay. Please don't change these URLs though, these uh, boxes, because these are the personalization tags. If you change them, the emails will not work as expected. And you can see the personalized tags over here. So when you're mailing someone automatically, 
you can include all this information if you want. For example, if someone is, insists on an invoice, you can send them an automated email with all the fields and all the settings that you that represent an invoice, essentially. All right, great. So these are all the welcome slash administrative emails. Once you're done with that, then you go into the registration form, which is only relevant if you are using Stripe. And also it is going to change with smart products. So when you're using Stripe, if you want people to register for their own account, you can use this. For Stripe, actually you have to use this because that is where people put their information as well as their bank details, their credit card details, which is what you need to make the transaction and then send them their access. So these are the three subsetting pages of the general settings of the membership, of the smart membership. And all you need to do is follow them step by step and you'll be able to configure your pages in no time. Giselle says, I did a live test of this entire process and it worked beautifully. Other than removing the password from the first email, which is security risk if it's sent via text, it was all great. Yep, yeah. Giselle, I think I remember you mentioning that passwords shouldn't be delivered via the first email. I somewhat agree. I think it's different for everyone. But if you don't wish to do that, that's okay. You can just ask people to go and set their password here. So you can send them the forget password link. Like, hey, your account has been created. Please go and set your password here. And that way people can create their own passwords instead of you creating a password for them. That's one way to do it. Of course, test everything. Make sure that it works for you. Perfect. Excellent. So that's the settings process. Um, Michael, let me know if it's, oh, sorry, Michael. Marilyn, let me know if it's clear for you uh, which link you need to share with people to be able to give them access. Okay, while I wait, let's move forward. And uh, perfect, perfect. Let me show you then the next few things within this. Uh, the big, big part of Kaiview, of course, is setting up the actual content. Like how do you add videos? How do you add text? How do you add modules, content pieces, lessons, and so on? So. This is a course that I know Alvin mentioned that he was creating. I'm going to delete this, but I'm going to add a new one so you can see it from scratch how everything is created. So let's go ahead and add a new product. I'm going to call this one, hmm, let me think. Let's call it Kaiview Walkthrough Demo. So if you want to put some description, you can as well. This is a walkthrough series showing how Kaiview works. You can set your currency as well. We've had a few requests about allowing different currencies as well. We will, especially with smart products, we will. So don't worry if your currency isn't listed here. Just go with the default option, USD for now. Then you can choose the sales page for this one. So sales page typically is the one sitting inside of Kaiview. At the moment, we don't have the facility for you to have an external sales page listed here. Now, if you do have an external sales page and you want to use that, it's fine. You can. There's absolutely no problem with that. But just know that we need the sales page in this case. So when people land on the dashboard and, you know, if they don't have access to a product that they want to buy, they'll be taken to a sales page. As of now, we only have Kaiview to where people can be taken to. Any page within Kaiview, they can be taken there within your account. So there's a sales page, there's a custom thank you page op URL option as well. So when people buy, you can take a, them to a custom thank you page. There are a couple of other options here. You can show member progress or you can hide it. And you can show the quiz on the module page or you, and you can or you can hide it. In this case, I'm going to set both as no for now. I'll come back in and I'll change them and I'll show you how that affects things. You can have a product image here as well. So 
image that people will see when they are logged in uh, when they go to the dashboard what kind of image will they see in that case you can allow people to upgrade to me this is a really cumbersome option it's really only only valid when you have a recurring subscription for membership so if you have a recurring subscription for the membership if someone's paying five bucks a month they want to pay ten they should be able to do that right from their account page that's what this feature allows i have personally never used it because even if you have recurring membership products there are always only one price that we don't have multiple prices then if you want the product to be active set it to active you can put in your support email or you are a link over here so i'm just going to say mail to support at kaiviewer.com there we go once you're done with this click on next then you can select which payment you wish to accept which payment are you comfortable with accepting so i'll go for stripe and paypal and for good measure i will also go for say zaxa let's click on next then you've got the option to add different pricing so you can have the a lifetime price you can have a free price or you can have a subscription it's entirely up to you we treat all three the same in terms of making sure that accounts are created fine and the process goes fine that all works behind the scenes regardless of what you do over here so you can select the price so let me say in this case i'm going to say one time price Mm, I can't remember what the product was they were working on. Let's just say Kaiview. Okay. Who can purchase public members only? I would say public. Why restricted, right? But if it's a product that you only want to be available to members that are logged in, then you can choose members. So for that to for them to then buy, they have to already have access to your membership area. And then you have this additional purchase option requirement as well. Personally, I don't care about it. Again, it applies to memberships with subscription plans, which I have rarely ever seen. Then you've got the PayPal integration, Stripe integration, as well as now Zaxa integration. So I'm going to create product. All right, Kaiya walkthrough demo is ready. Let's go in and edit it. We already saw the payment options. We already saw the price levels. Now we'll see that the PayPal link is available, the Stripe link is available, and Zaxa is not available at the moment, but it will be once I put in the product SKU, which is the product ID, and also the price number. Then this is the URL that I'm going to go and paste inside of zaxa so they can talk to each other so once you're happy with this you can add more price variants if you want but i'm okay with this so i'll just click on update product and then i'll just jump on over to action step number four which is actions so this is one screen by the way that will change with smart products you will still see the same names and same branding but just that their function would be more compartmentalized than they are right now So for step four, you have actions. And let me show you what kind of actions apply in this case. So let's say if someone buys this plan level one that we have. In that case, you can do four things. You can add this customer to an email or an autoresponder, to an email list rather. You can register them to a webinar. 
you can give customers additional access to other products as well, which I think is pretty cool. So if they buy this, maybe if I'm offering this as a bonus, I can give them these products. Or you can apply and remove tags. Now, personally, this doesn't work to the level where I would like it to work. So regardless of whether you use it or not, not a big deal. But the other three really, really important. And the cool part is this, you can have multiple actions. So I can do this, I can add another action, I can add another action and so on. So this makes it easy for me that when someone buys something, I put them on multiple different automations. That way, I don't have to do a lot of manual work following up with them. So that's the actions part. Let me see if you have any questions and then I'll go ahead and continue with this demo. The allow upgrade, I can use this if they're on a monthly plan and want to upgrade to an annual plan, right? Um, just that's a very good question. I haven't considered that, but I'm trying to think. So basically what you can do is, oh, sorry. What you can do is you can make people jump from one of these plans to another plan. So it could be monthly, could be yearly, could be lifetime, could be free, it doesn't really matter. Okay, perfect. Um, I have a recurring subscription for monthly or people can pay annually or do a lifetime fee. So would you recommend I use the allow upgrade function? Uh, Marilyn, it's a great question. So I'll repeat the question again. I have a recurring subscription for monthly or people can pay annually or do a lifetime fee. So would you recommend I use the allow upgrade option? Absolutely. That's what I would recommend you do. If people already have one, they can upgrade and move on to the other option. Okay, no problem. Now do note that this feature works better with Stripe than with PayPal because the way PayPal functions, it's a little bit annoying, but with PayPal, you have to, the person has to go back to PayPal again to authorize a payment, to authorize a change in payment. With Stripe, it can happen within our platform. So people don't need to go back to Stripe for that. So it's smoother. Now, let's go into the content part, which is where most amount of fun happens. So we've got this laid out quite straightforward. I'm just going to add a couple of things and then I can explain to you how they work. Aha, interesting. So I think someone in the group today pointed out that this rotating thing wasn't allowing them to add new content. I'm going to go check it afterwards what it is. So let's revert back to another product that already exists so I can show you something there. Okay. Let me just uh, check one thing. All right. Okay, so this is one of the products. And again, I wanted to show you some content here because, because it already exists. And I want to zoom back out as well. Okay. So adding a module is quite easy. You simply click on here and it will add a new module for you. Module is a, is a bigger overarching thing, overarching thing that can have multiple lessons underneath it, multiple pieces of content, right? So for me, module defines a big category. So read this first, or module one, live calls, module two, final critiques, module three, new courses, hot seat sessions, and so on. And then within it are different lessons. 
So for module one, live calls, we have live call one, live call two, live call three. Then we have critique one, critique two, critique three, things like that. This is how you structure a membership site, typically. Now, I'm going to go ahead and edit this one. I'm not going to save my edits, but I want to show you how this actually looks and what all you can do with it. A lot of people have had this problem that they don't see a menu on the left hand side. A menu will only appear if you have published at least one module. So if I go back here, here, you can see that this is set as draft, so it's not going to show. But if I change it to publish, then it will show as a menu item. OK. So in this case, we have a few different fields on the left. We've got the text box, which I can, for example, drag and drop here. And I can just edit this text as I do inside of Funnel Builder. I can drag and drop images, similar to Funnel Builder. I can drag and drop a video, which is what you see here. Again, very similar to Funnel Builder. And then I can also drag and drop a button. There. OK. So you can select buttons this way as well. I, I quite often use these buttons if I want to upsell within a course or if you have you know, affiliate products that you want to promote within a course, that's where these buttons would come into play. Then you've got the option also to have box here. So um, this box is if you want to put some content in here as well, there. So it just you know makes it look a little bit different from the transparent box at the back. OK, then you've also got the option for having a line here, which is just to separate out content. You can change the thickness, things like that. And you also have the option to give space. There you go. Essentially allowing you to make quite a few customizations inside of Kaivio members area. Now, I personally do think that the templates that we have within this are somewhat limited. So we have new templates already designed that are waiting to go in, and they will be available once we upgrade to smart products. They'll be different looking. I'm not saying they'll be better. I mean, I think they will be better, but I want you to decide that, but they will be different looking. So the layout would be quite different to what it is right now. Let's exit this. If you want to save, you can click on the green button over there. If you want to view, you can do that as well. But I've just exited it out because I don't want to edit this product because it's a live product. OK, as you can see, even though I'm selling it, I haven't actually picked a proper sales page. I could. Um, well, the sales page is on the other account, so a little bit annoying, but yeah. Uh, cool. Where is the quiz added? I thought it had it done, but it didn't work. OK, sure, of course. So let's go back and do that as well. So I'm going to go into here. So I can show member progress, and I can show quiz score and module page. So let's go ahead and go into this content, right? So we've got this content over there. You can preview it. You can edit it. You can even drip. By the way, let me just do this first. You can even drip feed it. So you can click here and you can say, OK, enable content drip and enable content expiration. So I want the content to expire in 10 days and I want the content to drip in one day. And that way, 
the content will be available a day after purchase and after 10 days it will expire now that is really really cool that is really really good because not only can you drip the content but you can also close it down if you want to right let's cancel this okay then you've got the option here for adding or editing a quiz so i could for example say that this is the funnel ramp exam some description if you need members can only take the quiz after they have completed the lesson that's up to you take yes or no uh let's say published and then you can add questions and answers there Okay, so I'm going to just say one point. And one point. That's it. Let's save the quiz. Okay, the quiz has been saved. It exists now for this one. If I go back here. Remember, we have a quiz, but for that, someone has to, they have to first finish the content. And then they'll be able to see it but because I'm logged in as an admin I can't actually see it let me see if I can um, add myself here and log in from somewhere else there let's go ahead and do that okay now let's see if i can log in if i remember my password nope okay just give me a second and i will reset this password right now actually i can show you that process as well so to reset password all i have to do is click here and say neil at kv social submit okay the email password has gone back to my email i'm just going to pause and find my email okay there password reset assistance and again remember this is the email that we had set up before so I'm going to go ahead and reset the password here. There you go. Okay, I'm logged in already, which is good. So let's go ahead and access this product. So I have this product available now to me, Funnel Ramp. Uh -huh. I think I need to log in one more time. Okay. Hmm. I think it's because I'm logged in from two places at the moment. That's why. Let me see if I can still do something about that. Okay, well, it's being a little bit annoying about that, but um, typically what would happen in this case, the way we have set up the quiz, so going back to the quiz, the way we've set it up is once the module is marked done, then the quiz shows up, right? So I can change this so people can even answer the quiz without actually finishing the module. 
and let's see this again yep so when the module is finished they will be able to answer the quiz and the quiz results will appear for you inside the manage membership site so let's go ahead and look at that is everything clear about the the membership creation walkthrough let me know if that's clear and i can jump in and uh, move on to the next part All right, perfect. Um, great, good, good. Glad you're enjoying it. So let's go into the manage members area. Now we do have a few different things here and I want you to focus because um, there's a lot of different things that I'm gonna show you, you might miss them. So make sure you also go back and watch the replay in case you do miss them. So there are a few different ways in which you can view all the members that you have. Uh, I can click on the product name and it will bring up all the members for me for that particular product. I can like do this and it brings up all these. I can click here and it brings up all of these customers and here and this and so on and so forth, right? So it's easy for me to look at all the results like this. But let me show you actually what happens when I search for a particular member. So if I type Neil, there you go. So it brings up all these different people, right? So I want this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look at this one first, lesson completion and quiz stats. Have I completed all these lessons? No, these are all the lessons for which I am registered. I have to see why we're getting these random characters. And same way if I have done any kind of quizzes, it shows up there as well. Oh, sorry, the screen wasn't shared. I'm sharing it now. Yep, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, should be fine now. Okay, but I just simply went into, let me do this again. I went into manage members. And I showed you that you can select the product using this. And it'll bring all the customers for that particular course. Okay, let me just remove this. There. It brings up all the customers for a particular course. So it's an easy way for you to kind of look at your customer list if you want to and see what kind of things they have access to who has access to what basically and you can then click here and you can look at what lessons have they completed already see it shows that this person has completed this lesson and if they've taken a quiz or not shows me that as well right if you want to add a member there are a few different ways if you want to manually add a member you go to this uh page and you go to this um link and you just add an email address, the password, confirm password, all these different fields. Simple enough. Not all of them are mandatory. So if you don't want to add some things, you don't have to. Okay. But when you do, when you do, please send a welcome email as well. Otherwise, they will not get an email with access. So make sure you send them a welcome email as well. Another way to add members is to import them and mask and mask. So you can select product. So let's say I want to add people to this particular product. I can drag and drop a CSV file or I can just browse from my computer. Right. So let me just download this template. OK, I'm just going to use the same template here. So this one, let's say no need to send a welcome email because I mean, you should, but I don't know what's what email addresses are here okay all good okay imported members have been queued to be added to your list visit import monitor page to see this progress let's go into import monitor you can see that it will add two members 
and it has been added to the queue. Usually it takes like just a few minutes to do, especially with two members, it should be relatively instant. So maybe like two to three minutes and it should be done. You can also export members if you want. So you can choose the products. You can say, okay, I want these products. Let's export a CSV and it exports all the members in a CSV format. So if I wanted to mail them, if I wanted to segment them and so on and so forth, I could do that from here. Okay. Eventually, when we add more in-depth quizzes, when we add more feature set to members, more data, you'll be able to do a lot more things with this. Like one of the key features that I want in future is the ability to mail people based on how much of the content they have consumed. So if you are using Kaivio email marketing solution as well, and if you have the smart membership, then you will automatically be able to click a button and mail all the people who have consumed, let's say, less than 50% of the content of a product, which I think is really, really useful. If you want to engage people, you want to engage those that are not consuming the content, right? So that's something that they'll be able to, you'll be able to do in future. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see some questions. Marilyn says, I added a couple of manual members today and I got into a loop with a zip code and country. So in the end, I left those fields blank. Okay. Marilyn, we'll check that out. Nicholas, if you could make a note of that. But yeah, if it, it's not mandatory, no need to add it. Uh, Giselle's asking, so the import from CSV is how I bring in students from WordPress site. And so they wouldn't be charged again. Exactly. We don't charge them again. I mean, you just have to import the list and we automatically send them an email. And that way, yeah, they don't get charged. Because you're not really putting any payment details with us, right? You're not giving us any payment details. And even if you do, we won't just charge them automatically, even if you ask us to. They have to actually enter a contract with you, enter into a contract where they say, okay, I want to buy this. That's how that would work. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. So then the other feature that we have in Smart Membership is the theme slash page manager. We have a few different themes here. I mean, we have, <clears throat> I would say five, but honestly, they quite like each other. They're, there's nothing too unique about, like, the, you know, they're not different from each other, which is why I'm really looking forward to new themes when they come in, because some of them will not have a right panel. Some of them will have instructor information, things like that will really make it much more fun, let's say. Then we have reports and stats module as well, which again, I think is still under construction because when we move to the new user interface, we haven't updated this one. I think we might just do one straight update with smart products. So you might have to wait till then to see more detailed reports and stats, even though we already have this kind of for the funnel builder, but we don't have it for smart memberships. So this is what the dashboard looks like, you can see. If I go here, I can see all the different products, all the different modules. Let's go and access this module. There. Again, because I'm logged in as an admin, I can't actually mark this lesson done. Otherwise, I could. All right, so this is how easy it is to use Kaivio to build your own membership sites to make sure that people keep coming back to you to consume your content and it's only going to get better. That's it from my side. I am here to answer questions. So please let me know if you have any questions and I'd be more than happy to answer them for you before we end the session. If not, 
will post up a replay within 24 hours. I'm going to make sure that I download the video and I know we're having some trouble with the adding content part. So I'll make sure that, I'll make sure that works fine as well. All right, great. Giselle, I really appreciate you being on the call. Uh, Marilyn, I don't think I'll ever get there, but is there a limit to the number of modules you can add? There is no limit, Marilyn. You can add as many as you want. Okay, Giselle, lovely to have you on the call as well. Everyone have a good rest of the day. It's Monday, I'm excited. It's gonna be a good week. I'm still in India and I'll travel back on Friday to Finland. All right, have a good rest of the week then. Bye everyone.